All right, so I'm not sure if you know, but Katie Kookaburra is another being tiger. She's a bit of a legend, to be honest, has a lot of subscribers. And then anyway, she did a 20 minute effort. And it was quite funny because a lot of people got triggered by this. So basically, she did 20 minutes at 280 watts, which for a woman is very, very respectable. I mean, for a guy, that's still very solid. Like, it wasn't, took me a fair whack to get to 280 watts. I think she's about 67 kilos, so it's about 4.3 watts per kilo, which again is, is very solid. Like, we can look at the old Andy Kong and watts per kilo chart, uh, and you will see that it is very high up. Uh, for a woman and well for most men a lot of men can't get to um four watts per kilo as well uh so yeah i think a lot of people are triggered by this uh but anyway yeah 4.3 watts per kilo is sort of like you see i did three pro i mean obviously this chart is slightly out but you know it's, it's, it's like a uh, uh definitely respectable but anyway there are a lot of people who are very misinformed about fdp um so anyway here like you should try an indoor ftp like why unless you ride indoors the whole time it's absolutely pointless indoor ftps are way more accurate than outdoors so what are you on about you're an absolute idiot like i don't think people understand this it's like you have a potential like it's all about the lactate the what's are a way of showing the lactate but indoors like it's just retarded because it's, i just don't really understand how to explain to people but it's like if you can do a certain power outside that still sets your zones. And if you do a, set, a certain power inside, that sets your zone. Not one is better than the other. It just depends where you train. If you train indoors the whole time, then do your 20 minute test inside. If you train outdoors the whole time, do your test outside. If you're a time trialist and you do and you want to have your FDP for time trials, then yeah, I'd probably suggest doing a 20 minute um, test on the flat. However, your numbers potentially aren't going to be as good. But if like Katie does, she quite likes riding up hills and wants to get better at hills, then she's going to be doing most of her intervals on hills. Therefore, it makes more sense for her to do her FDP test on hills because it's representative. Um, there's also some hilarious ones. Uh, why do a 20 minute FDP up a hill? It's like, well, that's because pretty much everyone does that. Even Andy Conklin, like just read the book, Racing and Training with a Power Meter, and then you just be like, oh, fair enough. And none have suggested 20 minute efforts uphill for an indication of FDP. Oh, so Andy Conklin just like was lols, I'll just make that up and it just doesn't work. I mean, like, He's quite a clever guy. Yeah, for sure, the best way of doing it is actually having lactate testing. However, lactate testing is quite an expensive process. I also believe that ramp test probably is better in terms of, like, in an, like as a scientist, I would say it's better. However, the problem is it's very hard to replicate. And also, if you don't ride indoors, I, I don't think, again, don't think there's any point. What's your FTP on your indoor trainer? Um, and then, here we go. Try push the same power on the flat for 20 minutes and on the turbo for 20 minutes and guarantee it will be lower doing the ftp uphill is not accurate it's like oh my god you're so retarded yes but you have still the same potential to do the 20 minutes on the turbo you just need to tune your muscles because i've done this when i was doing intervals only on the flat and i went to adelaide and did intervals on the hills it was actually hard on the hills because my body was trained to do it on the flat so there's actually zero reason why people say that um yeah, it's just retarded. Um, we've got a really fun. We got some really funny ones though. There's a lot of them. Um, well, there's a lot. Oh, here we go. Sixteen replies. This is it. Um, this is where people get really triggered. Um, this person, firstly, Team Scott used stages dual side, which are accurate. However, one side base pa base power meters from stages are not accurate. Just okay. No scientific evidence there. But anyway, we will see. I'm slightly triggered because I do have the stages. And yeah, for sure, maybe they're not mega mega accurate. Uh, and then it was like. I know some extremely good female cyclists who are season races that can't push anywhere near 280 watts. Again, that's irrelevant. I know people who don't even race, who go way faster than a lot of people who race, but they just don't like it. Um, and then again here saying there's no, like, just this whole thing about people get pretty triggered about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just don't really understand why people get, get so triggered by it and just the whole FTP thing. It's like, do you do this up a hill? Here we go, there's going to be some people... You should try doing on the flat or a trainer as comparison. The problem with using other hills, if you stand up using your body weight, which skews the data. So how does that skew the data? Like, it's just retarded again. Like, FTP, the whole point is, is an approximation. In the definition, it is an approximation of what you could hold for an hour, theoretically. So, like, I just don't get it. I mean, it, it, the whole point is, is that it's trying to establish a training zone. It doesn't matter if it's like, like... People just seem to think that it's like this thing where you should just sit down on a turbo train and just ride for 20 minutes as hard as you can and that's it. Not standing out the saddle, spinning at whatever cadence. It's like, well, no, obviously not. The whole point is it's supposed to be representative if you ride. If you ride out the saddle, do you think Contador, when he does his best 20-minute power, sits in the saddle? Absolutely not. He definitely does his best 20-minute power out of the saddle and that's what he'll use for his FDP. So it's just retarded. Like, people are so dumb and they just don't seem to understand that it's like... Uh, yeah, there's, I don't believe that. True, power is power. You don't get free power by standing up. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like you're just working your arms, and that is, the whole point is it's lactate threshold. It's not just about your legs, it's about your whole body, and the point where your body is removing lactate. I mean, it's like when technically, like, I mean, so many things would cause you to, um, to create lactate. Um, and all, it's just like, the other thing is, is, is about your zones as well. Like, I mean, it, so let's say, like, my test, the two times eight minutes, if it's too high, which some people think it is, I think it could be, well, my, I won't be able to complete any workouts. So that's the other thing. It's like, even if people say it's incredibly inaccurate and all this stuff, it doesn't really matter as long as you get your zones right. And then when you're training, you're training in the right zones. So if you're doing, like, I don't know, threshold intervals at, like, 300 watts, let's say, and because your FTP is 300 watts, but you can only do, like, the first 10 minutes and then you die. Well, it's like, well, yeah, obviously, like, you tested wrong or, like, you know, you're not actually that. Um, so, yeah, people are just... People just don't seem to really understand FTP. And it's quite funny because I, I make a lot of videos about them just because people don't really seem to understand what it is and why people do it. Like, it's not this thing where you're, like, showing off what what's you can do and all the rest of it. It's just to set your training zones. And the reason it's done on these training zones is because Andy Coleman went to the lab and figured out, oh, if we do a 20-minute test and take 95%, that's approximately what is, for most people, their lactate threshold, which, again... Is taken from lab numbers. It's not just like, oh, yeah, we'll just do it randomly. Like, I mean, you go to the lab and you see at what point does your lactate stay steady state for about an hour when basically you're making the same amount of lactic acid as your body can remove. And it's quite obvious. But a lot of these people do not seem to understand this and think it's some like magical test where you just sit down and ride on the turbo trainer for 20 minutes as hard as you can and then you know, you, all your zones are done and that's it. It's like, no, it, it's it's just not. The whole point is it's an approximation. And if you really want to do an hour absolute full gas, then that probably is the best approximation. But again, mentally you're going to be limited because not many people can really push their power that they theoretically could. The limiter would be the mind, not your brain, not your legs. But anyway, cheers for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, make sure to check out Katie's channel. Um, but yeah, I find it absolutely hilarious, all these people who are just absolutely clueless about FTP and have no idea what they're talking about, but giving so much advice.